Welcome to another episode of Core Discussions. I'm Legacy. And I'm Max. I'm Bobby. Adam and Jay. We are doing another episode of Core NFL Recaps. We're recapping week five, ladies and gentlemen. Baby! Week five. Lots of news to talk about. Going to be a hectic uh, kitty corner coming up. Before we start, we're going to go ahead and please share, like, subscribe, all that good stuff. Thank you all again for all the people who are supporting and commenting, watching out there. We're going to get into week five. Gentlemen, are you ready? Yes. Yep. Oh, yeah. All right. We're going to start off with that thrilling Thursday night game, a 12 to 9 game where the kickers really made their money. It was the Colts over the Broncos. If I had to see the Broncos one more time, and which I will have to because I have more primetime games coming up, I'm going to scream. This is the ugliest offense in the league. The Broncos are the cure for insomnia. They are. I don't know. I was so bored watching that game, I stopped watching it. I rarely do that with a football game, but that's how bored I was. It was so bad that the the Broncos fans left before Mm overtime. Yep. I don't blame them. I don't blame them. I was not going to, I would not waste any more time watching That's that That's how team. fed up they were with watching that bad <laughs> offense. The game was tied 9-9 nine to nine going to overtime and the fans said, I'm out of here. I've seen enough. I know where this is going. Well, Baker just sucks because he sucks. Like, I don't know what's going on. With honestly, the, the franchise should be freaking out of that visual of all the fans leaving because that's mm-hmm. a bad sign. They need to be freaking out about that contract they gave Wilson because what if he just sucks from now on? I don't understand what's going on with this man. I don't know. I don't know what's going on. It's, it, he's been the most disappointing quarterback this year. Just it's not it's not Baker. Well, Russell Wilson actually was one of the best. In terms of in terms of in terms of like potential, it'll be Russell. But in terms of like, no, it will be Russell anyway because people actually had expectations. Yeah, for Russell. Yeah, exactly. No Whereas really most people realized before the season started that Baker was some trash, and then he just proved that he was trash. Yeah. Pretty much anyone besides anyone like, but Baker, anyone but Baker and Justin and Justin maybe Fields Justin maybe. Fields. Well, Matt Ryan hasn't been better either. Yeah, yeah. So, and but in terms of like name value, Russell's the worst because he should be. You know, oh yeah, 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 yeah. And QBR, the ESPN said Russell Wilson's twenty six. And that's about right, I would think. And the quarterback rating is twenty two. This is not where he should be. No, with the amount you gave him and what you gave up to get him with draft picks, he's in top ten. Yeah, what? Probably really top, top five. five. What, yeah, but I say what top five? What yeah. they gave up. But aside from Russell Wilson, uh, the only saving grace for the Broncos has been their defense. But their defense is getting gassed now. You could tell near the end of the game they were just done because the Colts were doing nothing all game. But uh, the Broncos keep going three and out, three and out, three and out. The defense let up. It wasn't by much. They only let up two field goals. But still, that's enough in this game. You know, we got Bradley Chubb who's making North Carolina proud with how well he's playing this year. And even if you're happy, okay. like if if you're a Colts fan and you're happy they won, you still can't be too happy because you, you be a really bad Broncos right. team, and your team still didn't but, look good. You still didn't. But look good. now they're still they're the still Colts in it. Yeah, they're still are in still in it. it. Yeah, yeah. I'm still not convinced that they are anywhere close to no. claiming that. Like I think it's really just Tennessee and Jacksonville at this point. Yeah. Well, we said for the Colts when they beat the Chiefs that uh, it was essentially the Chiefs giving the game away. I also feel <laughs> this game. They won because Denver gave the game away. I don't really think they really won either game. Yeah, I mean Russ had those killer interceptions. So that interception at the end, near the end of the fourth quarter, when they were Broncos up three and the Broncos were in the red zone trying to kill clock, and I can tell you the coach probably told Russell Wilson before that pass. All right, Russell, if it's not there, throw it away. It's one of the most boneheaded plays I've ever seen. It would have put him up six, and which in that game it would essentially be it. What was worse, that throw or the uh, Florida State, NC State throw? <laughs> no I mean, uh, throwing that ball. Uh, you know. But either way, awful, awful game. I missed the game, but I kept. I saw the end. So I was in overtime, twelve to nine. I was like, "Oh, good lord!" If you're it's a fan of special game. teams, this is probably a great game to watch. More we're defense. The, uh, yeah, yeah. So we'll go on to our next game. It was once again we had nine thirty a.m. game. It was a London game. Baby, let's talk. This month might be a while. Let's talk about it. It was the U- New York Giants with Danny Dimes, Vanilla Vic, over the Aaron Rodgers. Yeah, yeah. No matter how many times you try to coin Vanilla Vic, I don't think he's going to make it on his pro football reference page. Oh, yeah, it's, well. it's going to happen. It's going to be there. It's well-deserved. Uh, you know, I like to point back to a certain point in our podcast where somebody predicted 
because I'll admit the Broncos thing with Super Bowl is a bit much. But let me tell you, when I predicted that this team will make playoffs <laughs> and it's looking pretty good because about five more wins guarantees them playoffs, I have to say it, it it's feeling a little bit better. Um, this was a good game. I missed most of it. I didn't get home until like the last couple drive till uh the several drives that the Giants scored. Big game. I mean, I've been saying for several years, and these guys have all heard me. I said I don't understand how Brian Dayball does not have a co- head coaching job yet. I felt he was a good coach. His offense has done well, even the before when they went to the drive before their last one. Saquon was out. Daniel Jones was making the most out of it. Was making plays. Rushing, keeping plays elongated. Though he didn't get the touchdowns, he still was putting them in pole position, playing well. Um, the last one, Saquon came back out there because he was so determined. Had a big 40-yard run, had a big catch. Oh, sorry, it was a 40-yard play. Also had the touchdown mm-hmm. on that. This team played, I mean, four of its top five receivers were, are out. Mm-hmm. Defense lost about two people, but yet this team still won. You know, there's something about... You know, getting the right coach. I think Brian Dayball's doing it. I thought, again, I'm not saying Daniel Jones is like the greatest ever, but I'm saying he's good enough. But Phil, so three three playoffs. times already. He already has three game winning drives. The hell that Saquon is back. Yeah, it I was not saying like Daniel Jones when he has good talent around him can be good. We've been saying that. Yeah. He just had his whole team has never been healthy. Mm-hmm. And he's oh, had a crap still line. Not. They're still, he's still not. Yeah. But at least they're still not. His, but at least they have Saquon. You, you mentioned O line. Uh, yeah. The O line's been playing pretty well. The left tackle, I believe, if you care about PFF, which I don't necessarily do, but according to PFF, he's the highest graded left tackle don't so far think, this year. I don't think John's mm-hmm. need a receiver, but they're getting screwed over pretty by much. that Kenny Galladay contract. Oh, yeah. Well, they they finally realized Darius Slayton was good because he killed the Packers this week, mm-hmm. and they should play him ahead of Kenny Galladay because as of right now he's better than him anyway. So uh, they're just letting the money be the reason Kenny Galladay's playing. He he they might as well just sit on the bench. He's he's lost cause at this point. Yeah, it's good right there. But I would yeah. say another thing that that's going to help the Giants potentially make the playoffs. This defense, I think, is exceeding expectations. Mm-hmm. So far this year. Go to the opposite outside of the ball, the Packers. The Packers should be worried. The yeah. Packers fans maybe, need to be worried. Absolutely. Maybe the Packers should finally realize maybe they should draft receivers in the first round. Again, I said that Devontae Adams was going to come back a little more than they thought. And then they should also be worried because Randall Cobb is your best receiver. That is not like this is not Randall Cobb 2010. This is now or 2013. This is Randall Cobb, 2022. He ain't the same guy. The Alan Lazaro, he's not wide receiver one either. There's no wide receiver one that I can see. I will also, some of their decision making has been weird because Aaron Jones, like, averaging well, like, one of the best yards per carry, yeah. but they still try and, like, I know why they try and give the ball to AJ Dillon, but you got to incorporate him more into your offense. Yeah, like, he's only you, averaging 12 carries a game. You, what the Giants did, they realized Saquon is their best player. Get him in open space, give him the ball. You need to do that with Aaron Jones. No, they need to run him more, honestly. They threw it 39 times in a game that was pretty competitive, and they were leading most of the game. The yeah, Packers were really uh, until ball. until the fourth quarter. So they only ran it twenty times total, thirteen times with Aaron Jones, six times with AJ Dillon, and both of them averaged four point eight yards or more. Whereas Aaron Rodgers on the day with passing averaged five point seven yards. So the play calling is not working right now. They need to be more of a running team than a passing team, and I think that's I think that's a big reason why they lost this game. Yeah, so I think they'll still make playoffs. Packers. They'll make playoffs. Now again, mine is I just don't think they'll go far. They'll go no. anywhere in playoffs. This is not looking like a good team unless they figure it out. I know some people have also called for them trying to sign OBJ to give him another. He's, he's not healthy. He's, he's not, not going healthy until playoffs. I don't think he's going to anywhere but Rams. He could go to Buffalo, oh, but. They're saying Buffalo might be a spot, too. But he's not going to be healthy until playoffs, so it doesn't matter. Yeah. All right. Um, we're going to go to the next game. Drew MVP performance as he put yeah. a bunch of points on me in fantasy this week. Um, mm-hmm. We're going to talk about Bills versus the Steelers. Gabe Josh Davis Allen. is taking over the league. Gabe Davis is going insane this year. Oh, Josh Allen is playing like a man that's about to get paid. Actually, did he already get paid? He's already got paid. Yeah, he got paid already. Well, he might want to ask for a raise. I'll tell you who's getting paid. Gabe Davis, you're going to see here his stats in the year? He has 11 catches, 309 yards, three touchdowns. He's averaging 28.1 yards per catch. Good God. 
Like he had three receptions, one seventy one, and two touchdowns this game. That's just, that's just ridiculous. ridiculous. Like <clears throat> anyway, slice of that's just ridiculous. Because that's over fifty yards of reception. The, it's are... insane. Um, but as far as the whole, I mean, we pretty much expected them to dominate Pittsburgh. Maybe not to this agree, degree. Um, but I think it's all but assured that Mike Tom was going to have his first losing season. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I was at least Kenny Pig actually looks alive as a quarterback. He I looks like so him. much better. This yeah. is a this is a tough four. team to have your first start yeah, against. This is yeah. I know he's been four picks so far in the whole season, which isn't good, but at least he's moving the ball. Yeah. As a that rookie, for for rookies, I don't care about picks. I want to see how you look, see if you're challenging the defense, stuff like that. So picks. Yeah, I, I mean, as a rookie, it doesn't matter. Also, on the downside, his 100 percent catch rate is no longer there. I, I mean. Know. True, but some of the top quarterbacks, Peyton Manning, Stafford, both had like a lot of picks their first year mm-hmm. because they're going to be moved, trying to do stuff. I mean, they're both high picks, but because they were trying to move the ball, they're going to be throwing them. You know, he had 300 some yards passing, which is pretty good. Yeah, I mean, like you know, what, what, what Mr. Biscuit left are probably the same amount of passing <laughs> and got like 250 yards. That's generous. Yeah, I was like, you being real nice. I don't know. I, I was being a little nicer there. than I needed to. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't know if you would have hit 200. <laughs> but, yeah. In right. four games, Mr. Trubisky has 653 yards. And two games, Kenny Pickers already at 447. See? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's really like one and a half games. Good game. Josh Allen putting his MVP case a little bit further yep. along. Bills playing the way we expect them to. I mean, next week's going to be interesting because I think the Bills play the uh, Chiefs. Chiefs. Yep. Yeah, that's, that's, oh, that's big... good. I'm shocked that's not a primetime game. Still, Bills yeah. Chiefs. I mean, that's primetime no matter what week it is. Like, come on now. Uh, uh, yeah, that should have been it. I would much rather watch them than the Eagles Cowboys. Shut your mouth. You know, inter- At least those are two, like, high ranked teams. Let's go next to a big win, uh, kind of to keep them in playoff contention. It was the Chargers over the Browns, 30 to 28. <laughs> To be honest, I'm a little disappointed with this performance from the Chargers, even with Joey Bosa being hurt. Uh, I thought they should have been had an easier time with this Browns team than they did. Maybe my expectations for the Chargers are higher than what they actually are, but I thought the Chargers would be a clear top contending team, and so far they haven't been. They were close to losing this game, too. Because oh, uh, oh, yeah. uh, this is the, the second game where the, the Browns kicker has caught, missed a kick to win, I think. Yep, the Browns kicker missed two field goals. Yeah. So the Browns lost us more than the Chargers won. Um, but, I mean, Austin Eckler is looking killer. Yeah, well, so is oh, Nick yeah. Chubb on the other side. Mm-hmm. Austin Eckler, 16 carries, 173 yards, a touchdown. And then you got Nick Chubb, 17 carries, 134 yards, two touchdowns. He's got seven rushing touchdowns through five weeks. Yeah. But, I mean, Chargers, you, I agree. They do. De- they definitely needed this win. If they had lost this, they would be falling, having a tough time for that wild card spot. I mean, yeah, they should they should beat the Broncos, but maybe the Broncos pulled ahead of their ass. One Isn't it crazy that the Browns team. could theoretically be five and zero if they had everything yeah. break their way? Oh, yeah. The three yeah. games they lost, they pretty much cost themselves the game. So 100%. I'll give them kudos; they've been much more competitive than I thought they would be. They has got to learn how to seal the deal. Yep, the difference between good and great. All right, we're gonna go to the next game: uh, divisional matchup, rivalry. The Minnesota Vikings over the Chicago Bears. Justin Fields finally had a good passing game. They actually let him throw the ball more than 20 times. 21 times to be exact. And he averaged almost 10 yards a pass. Maybe the Bears should look, actually try to see what they got in the guy before they just, like, you know, just abandon all hope. Vikings, I think, again, good divisional win. Pull, mm-hmm. Big thing, it pulls you ahead. You now go... A game ahead of the Packers. I don't have two games because you have the tiebreaker. And mm-hmm. when it comes down to division, the fact they also lost, that's a big, big thing. Could be the difference. Yeah. I mean, Vikings are 4 and 1. I just still don't see them being a legit contender. They'll make playoffs, but I don't see them being a legit just threat. Don't let the light oh, shine. I, 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 I don't. I don't, but I think they'll win the division. I think they'll oh, win, I think they'll win the division. They got the best yeah. offense, and the defense is okay. We'll go into that. Butt whooping the Patriots whooping up on the Detroit Lions. Uh, that? I did not I, see that coming, to be honest. Yeah, I, I was but, surprised uh, with how good the Detroit offense has been that they got absolutely yeah. shut up. I mean, Bill Belichick knows how to play Jared Goff, I'll tell you that. <laughs> Between yeah, the Super Bowl yeah. and this game, he has figured this man out. You know, I should have accounted for that, but that just never crossed my mind. But yeah. Apparently just Jared Goff does not know how to play against Bill Belichick. Yeah. Now, I thought the Patriots might win. 
um, just because I didn't think the Detroit Lions defense sucks, but I thought their offense would put up some points on Belichick, and I figured the Patriots would still win, especially with Steve. Like, I started Stevenson with anticipation. They're about to run the hell out of this ball. Um, but, uh, 161 yards. Yeah, I did not think it was going to be this. <laughs> did not see this one coming. Um, I'll also say, for people who say Bill Belichick isn't that great of a coach because he hasn't had – that much success since Tom Brady. This game proves to you how good of a coach he is. This team with a third string quarter or, or yeah, third string quarterback should not win this game against a team that was as offensively hot as this Detroit Lions team. And now you know the sports media is trying to say the Patriots have a quarterback controversy now. Um, how, I mean, uh, no, come on, now. not come at on. all. It's not. Mac Jones is definitely still the number one. I know they always want to jump on this quarterback controversy because you need a story, but no, there's no controversy. All right, we're going to go into a nice shootout. It was the Seattle Seahawks with uh, New Orleans Saints, and Geno Smith still ain't writing people back, man. I th- we said about Russell Wilson being top uh, – he should have been top five quarterback. That's exactly what Geno Smith has been so far, a top five quarterback. And it's been insane. I cannot believe what this man is doing after the yeah. career he's had. I'm going to be honest. I thought Geno would be the worst starter in the league going into the season. Um, he clearly proved me wrong. 75% completion. It's insane. I owe Geno Smith an apology from the bottom of my heart. You are better than I thought you would be. I'll still say I, I just don't believe this can keep up the, at this pace, but uh, he keeps proving me wrong every week. So, But it's just, if he keeps it the whole year, one of the greatest career turnarounds I've ever seen in my life. I'm just bewildered. I mean, apparently Pete Carroll knows what he's doing. He knew Russell Wilson, was <laughs> his career was yeah. fading. He Why? had a rising young star in Geno Smith. I watch this. You know, all the years people said, let Russell cook. What? If people watch it. If Gino keeps this up, people are going to say this. What if Russell Wilson was holding Pete Carroll back? <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. Okay. <laughs> of course. You know what's going to happen. Watch. Oh, of course. Somebody's going to bring that. Okay, I've, I've already seen some things about that. Yeah, it's like, no, that wasn't the case. But, uh, but, all right. aside, <laughs> but aside from Gino, uh, who's playing great, can we also talk about another man who uh, I wish my comrade Hunter was here? Uh, can we talk about Sweet Cheeks, a.k.a. Yes. Or, uh, Taysom Hill? Uh, nine rushes, 112 yards, three touchdowns, and he had a touchdown pass? I mean, come on. What a legend. It doesn't get any better than saying Sweet Cheeks run the ball. Phil, say it. Say it one time, Sweet Cheeks. Watching Daniel Jones play quarterback is much better. And for those of you who have not noticed this, um, Taysom Hill has a, a, a donk. He has a badonk. A <laughs> you mean this in the most uh, – Oh, most flat. Uh, I'm just glad that everybody – came to the conclusion or to the agreement that he's not a quarterback. He's a gadget player. Yeah, exactly. Um, one thing I've been seeing is that the Saints won this game. As I've seen some people say, should they go with Andy Dalton from here or should they go back to Jameis? What should they do? I figured that would be a story. Uh, probably I mean, Dalton for now and see what happens. That's then. false. James doesn't believe that. He nope. just wants to be right about James Winston. Hey, hey, yeah, I hey, know. Hey, He's hey, protected his bet. Uh, no, no. <laughs> hey, hey, hey. I, need, I, told, I told you guys a few weeks ago, I need, I need, I need, I need at least a three-week three buffer, and then James can come back in. Yeah. Well, I'll be honest. If they started Andy Dalton, they'd probably beat the Panthers. Well, they're going to beat the Panthers no matter who's playing next game because they, they're going to split. Right. You know, Dolan, Dolan's just showing that he's a serviceable quarterback. If he's a backup, but you know, he did his job. Uh, he's really brought Alvin Kamara's game back to life. Jameis doesn't check the ball down like Dalton. Kamara in this game has six catches, 91 yards. He probably hasn't done that since Drew Brees. This is the way to use Kamara. <laughs> so I think the Saints offense may function a little bit better this way. But, I mean, we'll have to see. Because Andy Dolan also played without uh, Michael Thomas. I don't think Jarvis Landry um, played. Yeah. And then Alave got hurt. Mm-hmm. They they won this game a shootout without being at full strength. So right, we're gonna go probably to the biggest shocker of the week. Um, it is the Jets with forty points over the Dolphins with seventy. Yeah, yeah. I think shocker would have been if you know if you look at it, you're like, hold on, they beat the Dolphins. But then when you look at it, third string quarterback because Teddy Bridgewater got hurt like in the first se- first or second series. I think it was the first. Mm, Dolphins, two weeks in a row, quarterbacks with concussions. I think, depending on how long two was out in Bridgewater, this team could be on a losing streak coming up. I, I think yeah. most of the shockers because the Jets just whooped them and put up 40 points. On yeah, that's the last time the Jets put up 40 this, points. On, on this defense, that has been pretty good. And like, yeah. you know, they've been a lot of points, but they've been playing some good teams. So 
It's like you think they would shut I this mean, team down, but I mean, when your offense is probably incompetent, it might be easy. Jets are three and two. I mean, that's a lot better than I thought they'd be through five yeah, games. I was like, even if Zach Wilson's not the answer. It's not like he can draft a quarterback next year. Zach Wilson played pretty well this game, I think. Yep. And they had five rushing touchdowns this game. Yep. Patriots yep. are bottom of the division at week five. <laughs> Brees Hall had a good game, 97 yard rush and 100 yards receiving. I mean, New York got to be happy. Both their teams got winning records. Mm-hmm. We'll see how long that keeps up. But yeah, I'm gonna say one of those teams. I don't see it. Coming. Jets play the Packers <laughs> this week. Let's see if the Packers. Oh, right. uh, let's see if they, they win. If the Jets, Jets, uh, if yeah, the Jets yeah. win, that's gonna be hilarious. Then they play, right. Jets play Packers, then Broncos. Two disappointing teams back to back. They can beat the Broncos. Anybody can if they're gonna play that bad. Yep. Yeah. We're going to the next divisional game. It was the Bucks over the Falcons, twenty-one to fifteen. Oh, as a coach, was not roughing the passer. Go ahead. I didn't see the game. It was not roughing the passer. No, I didn't see the game. Which one? Uh, Buccaneers, Atlanta. Yeah. 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 No, definitely not roughing. Only roughing because I mean, it was Tom Brady. I mean, I know a lot of Bucks fans say there should have been defensive pass interference in the previous play. That does, still doesn't negate <laughs> that they threw a flag for roughing the passer. What? It was a makeup like, call, man. It was a makeup can, call. What can defender? What can defenders do anymore? Like, they're eventually you're gonna have to start slapping flags on these quarterbacks. Well, if I'm Grady Jarrett, I would got another penalty for arguing with the ref. I probably would have gotten ejected. Kind of surprised this game was as close as it was, because it seemed like the Bucks dominated the game for the most part until the fourth quarter. That's when the Falcons scored all their points. Well, you know, if Marcus Mariota was actually a halfway decent quarterback, they might have pulled it off. They might have done better. But he's trash. He should feel like trash because he is. Damn, dude. What a hit he, what he did to you. Yeah. Um, he doesn't yeah. throw the ball to Kyle Pitts. Well, Kyle Pitts didn't play this game, so. I know he didn't play this game, but the whole season he hasn't thrown the ball to Kyle Pitts. Well, Any intelligent quarterback would know that. I, I will grant you, through five games, Marcus Mariota has 926 yards passing, four touchdown passes, 78.8 rating. So, hasn't exactly been lighting it up. He's trash. The shock of nobody. I didn't even like him coming out of college. I thought he... <laughs> <laughs> the fact, he went number two. I was like, I don't know what you're seeing. He was in that Oregon offense uh, as yet to produce a good just quarterback. Just be glad Chip Kelly wasn't able to trade yeah. the farm to draft him. Oh yeah, that would have been. Mm. I'm very glad because the rumored trade was ridiculous. I knew. I was like, I don't know what you all are seeing. We're gonna go to our next game. Um, it was the Tennessee Titans over the Washington Commander, 21-17. Well, Titans, you know, they might be on their way to winning another division, 3-2. Yeah. and two. Carson Wentz loves giving the Titans some picks at the goal line. Yeah, very unfortunate. He actually played a pretty good game besides that, yeah, besides uh, that one you know, pick. Besides that one throw, but, you know, he had to do it at the worst time possible. Mm-hmm. Oh, that was so great because I was like, Tennessee needed that one. Yeah, they definitely did. I mean, I should say, your boy Tannehill's not turning the ball over. Now, don't add, don't I don't want to say what his QBR was because that might help your point, Jacob. Mm-hmm. But you know, and what was that QBR? Seventeen point nine. Good lord! See, but, it's because the when Derrick Henry does 95. well, the Titans do well. When you have to rely mm-hmm. on Tannehill, you're not going to do well. Well, they fed Derrick Henry twenty eight times. Yep. Yep. Uh, one mm-hmm. thing that's hold on, Washington back. Uh, aside from Winston interceptions, but again, I think Wentz played pretty well this yeah, game. Yeah, yeah, he played overall well. Yeah, the running game for Commanders is awful. Hey, but let's let's give Brian Robinson a round of applause for coming back yes. after getting shot. Now he's he's a G for that. Yeah, I didn't. Um, uh, I didn't think he was going to come back this year. He's yeah. he's going to be the lead rusher at some point. Another thing that's holding the Commanders back is through five games, the defense has only forced one turnover. That's the worst in the league. The next closest would be the Raiders with three. So they're the Raiders have a 300% lead on them. And so one turnover that's through five impressive. games, that's that's pretty bad. That's impressive, you know. Mm-hmm. It's very hard to be that bad at getting the ball. But, you know, they find a way. When, some, when does Chase Young come back? They definitely need him. I mean, he's due back any time now. Yeah. All right, we're going to go to our next one. It is the a divi- another division of, uh, game. Was oh, the Texans versus the Jaguars, thirteen to sixteen. Uh, they I, was, I was I was shocked with this one. Very shocked. That was, that was. I because I, we said last just last week I think Jaguars going to the division. Now I got to rethink everything. They just lost to the Texans. Like, yeah, that's a real what do I make of this? What do I make of this Jaguars team? What? You know, maybe it was just a year away. You know, it's gonna take Doug Pearson just another year. Still, you yeah. lost to the Texans. Yeah, it's still the, Why the Colts tied them. The Colts tied them. So, the Colts know. suck too. I mean, the division sucks. They, I mean, yeah. See, it's a division worse. Jaguars play the Colts this week. That's a big game. 
Yeah, I know, right? Like, if the Colts lose again to Jacksonville, that's going to be a big I mean, they'll be, they'll be 0 one in division. I mean, you might as well write them off. I mean, either the AFC or NFC South is the worst division, but at least the NFC South has Tampa Bay. Yeah, but I mean, I was just shocked with this game. I thought the Jaguars would just steamroll them. I did, too. I was Texans, shocked. to their credit, have been competitive, I believe, uh, in most, if not all, of their games as well. I think their closest awesome. game was – uh, Biggest weapon was like ten points. I think that's the biggest. Yeah, they lost the Chargers by ten. So they've been pretty competitive throughout these games. So I'll give them credit. I I don't really think Davis Mills is the answer, and he didn't really play that well this game anyway. It's Jackson. uh, Trevor Lawrence has what? uh, He had five turnovers last week, and he had two more this week. So that's seven in two weeks. You're just not going to win that many games when you turn the ball ball over at that clip. No, he 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 got figured out. They should have lost this game. No, we waited long enough. We're going to get into our kitten corner with the 4 o'clock games. So it was the 49ers over the Panthers. Or our, time for our weekly kitten corner. You all may have the floor. Some bills, uh, no, Jacob, this is not... We're not happy. We're in mourning right now. Philip and I are in mourning. Oh, man. Now it's party time. Philip and I don't get to hear y'all complain about Matt Rule every week now. And also, now that mm-hmm. Baker is hurt, he may actually be hurt. I may just be being a jerk, but we don't Still get to hear our complaint about Matt Rule or Baker Mayfield for the next few weeks. Or Matt Rule yep. forever, but yep, Baker forever. for a few weeks. Goodbye already. back to college. Yep. Yeah, like I said, they say he's going to have his pickings of colleges. That's good for him. Worst coach in Panthers history, and I think he'll remain that way for quite some time. I mean, I got to say thank you, Kyle Shanahan, for doing the Panthers a solid. And, you know, uh, Panthers, looked, um, Panthers looked awful. Baker had one of the worst interceptions I've ever seen. That pick well, six was, was open. really a great – That pick six reminded me of Sam Darnold's last year against the Patriots of how bad of a throw that was. Yeah, dude. Oh my God, Baker – Like, every single pass he was pump fake. I'm like, no one's buying your pump fake, dude. It's like, if a lot of these players want to be traded, I would not blame one bit. McCaffrey yeah, deserves it's gonna be a fire. Deserves it's going to be a fire. So, it's going to be like nobody – uh, left on the Panthers can be players you even care about or know, and then like you can see all these players do well on other teams. I would say the Panthers have looked to be overall the worst team through five weeks. Yes. Oh, they definitely are, which makes me happy because they could get the first pick and draft a potential. Yeah, but sport. watch now that they got rid of their crappy coach, they might actually win enough games not to get the first pick. I know that's my only fear. Know. I don't know. Uh, all I all I all I will say is what I've also enjoyed. Is some of the Sam Donald hey, I've seen people who said bring Sam Donald back. So Panthers Nation Sam Donald will start. Apologies. I want my apologies. <laughs> Sam Donald will be starting when he comes back. I, I think that's pretty so much guaranteed. The box. G- give him a couple weeks. I don't know. Yeah, right? He him. doesn't need to yeah, play don't, the box. Don't throw him to the box. PJ Walker will start two games and then I think Donald will come back. Oh PJ Walker. He may be, he may play just as bad as Baker or you know slightly better. It's hard to do worse than Baker. I mean, statistics. I mean, as we said, Baker literally was the worst quarterback in the league. We're not even being, uh, we're not even exaggerating. By most measures, he was the worst quarterback. <laughs> quarterback rating seventy one point nine, QBR sixteen point six. It's hard to do worse than sixteen point six. We have tried to look and see. I just am also laughing because I kept hearing how great Baker was, how much Cleveland was gonna miss him. Really. Really? Do they mess them? Yeah, like some people try to blame Panthers defense, but no, they they can't. They get tired for being on the field because Baker sucks so much. The defense for the Panthers has been probably about league average, and that's more you can yeah. say about the offense. So this this also proves, and I said this in the beginning of the year, I think in our, our um, preview show that uh, Baker is going to prove he doesn't gel well with number one receivers. Through five games, DJ Moore only has 197 yards. He is on pace for 670 yards this year. By far, would be his worst season. Disgusting. Disgusting. And the sad part is, knock on wood, Chris McCaffrey's been pretty healthy so far. And that's been – I thought he would have gotten hurt by now, but knock on wood. And all I'm saying yeah. is the next Panthers coach, I guarantee, would not go 1-27 when the defense – or when the <laughs> opposing team scores 17 or more. I guarantee they won't be that bad. There's some statistics you guys pulled out about uh, Matt Roll's offense. Anybody want to share them? Well, you said 1-27. and Baker Mayfield for his career, which of course includes the Browns' time for his career. Anytime he's trailing by eight or more points, he's 1-27. and 
Like him and Rule were meant to be. I'm wondering who that one time was. That was his rookie season. All right, so I had to go back and look. Anytime he's down more than a traditional touchdown of seven points, mm. he, he is 1-27. in mm. well, I did know that 1-27 um, gave Matt Rule a career 3.7% winning percentage of 17 or more points. And then, so the total QBR was 30th, their offensive efficiency 29th, yards per game 29th, and points per game 27th. Mm. That's, that's Matt Rule, right? Yeah, Panthers under Matt Rule, yeah. Mind you, isn't this guy an offensive coach? Yeah, he's supposed to be an offensive coach. Okay, yeah. Philip, I don't know what kind of coach he is anymore. <laughs> <laughs> and, I'm just saying, and, you know, that's supposed to be the thing that's supposed to be good. <laughs> is uh, pretty sure he was an offensive coach. I just wanted to make sure that was it. And look, normally I don't advocate for people getting fired, but this man deserved it, and he's still getting paid forty million. Yeah. Panthers fans across the world, this is our Super Bowl. Matt Rule being fired. I'm so disappointed. I thought it'd be after the Buccaneers game. Yeah, I thought it was going to last a couple more weeks. Uh, yeah, I thought so sad. too, but I'm just so glad I don't have to watch his face on the sideline anymore. I'm so upset. There's so much material we're going to lose out now. Okay, looking no. dumbfounded about this, the simplest things. This, this kitty corner is going to go away. I don't, we're gonna yeah, because next week we're going to have any pizzazz. They're, they're not going to care if Steve Wilk is bad. They're not going to care if uh, P.J. Walker is bad. <laughs> yeah. If Matt, Matt Rules and Baker's not playing, I don't know what we're going to do. Thanks. But before we go to the next game, uh, 49ers did what they should have, uh, were supposed to do, defeat, uh, dominate the Panthers. So I don't think there's much to say about them. They just keep winning with Jimmy G. They keep winning. I'll play this for Matt Rule. No one's going to shed one tear for that, man. May he, may Nobody, he no. That's for opposing teams. I think the Rams might be like, man, you couldn't keep them for one more week. It was, it was an easy week. It was an easy win. All right. Um, speaking of the Rams, we're going to go into their game. Um, big disappointment. Cowboys mm-hmm. over the Rams for the that, defending Super Bowl the champions. Gentlemen, is it? Let's first talk about the Rams. Is it panic time? Yes. For the offense, uh, yeah, I think so because it's no, pretty no, much no. Cooper Cup or bust. Yeah, it's not panic time unless they lose to the Panthers next week. Oh, yeah. yeah. If they lose it, well, the bad thing also, if you lose to the Panthers, you're paying a heavy bill for a lot of players. Like, oh, yeah. You're, you got a huge expense bill that you need to be producing some wins. I know you won last year, but you keep, you know, your bill the, saying. You their window win. is small. Mm-hmm. So, you know, if they don't make playoffs this year, let's just say, I mean, you just wasted a year of your probably two or three year window. And Matt. Matt Stafford's just been degrading. Him and Matt Ryan lead the league in picks. Uh, I can't say. I've watched most of every game the Rams have played this year. And I got to say, Matt Stafford doesn't look that impressive so far. He may, He's going to look great this week against the Panthers. Cooper Cup's probably going to have 200 yards. He just he's looks off. He looks like that elbow injury they were talking about in the offseason is really affecting him. Uh, he's just playing like his normal trash self. Man, Bobby, okay. You need to stop. We'll never mm. stop. This man just won a damn Super Bowl. You can't be really crap it on him. Now, by, see, now that Matt uh, Matt Stafford finally has like a bad stretch, but I was like, oh, he's so bad. He's so bad. Look at this dude. Mm-hmm. He just can't, see, haters just can't wait for you to fall. <laughs> Look, any quarterback could do well with Calvin Johnson. Any, Jared bad. Goff couldn't win a Super Bowl with that team. But yeah, you didn't give him enough time. He went to a Super Bowl, and then he got, and then Bill Belichick crushed him like a grape. Like he, didn't, he just didn't give him enough time, you know. God could have done it. I mean, Sam Darnold could have won that Super Bowl last year. Darn right. Darn right. Look, it, like I said, it's not because I drafted Matt Stafford and he threw like 5,000 yards but only 20 touchdowns. That's, I'm not bitter about that. Clearly not. And that he only had 17 by the time our season was over in fantasy and threw three in the last week. No, no, no. I don't remember that at all. You just yeah. simply got to let go. All right. So, Sean McVay, I'll work on that offense. Um, we're going to talk about the other team, uh, the Cowboys. Uh, that defense looking, still being very dominant. People keep saying this quarterback controversy. There is, there's none. Can, can we stop with this Cooper Rush stuff? Just because a quarterback wins a game does not mean they're always played well or good. Pretty much the Cowboys' plan is good defense, run the ball. That is all yeah. the Cowboys are doing. They do For us, games. just don't throw an interception. That's it. That's literally what they're if, doing. If they beat the Eagles on Sunday Night Football, you're going to hear the talk explode of quarterback controversy. No, Dak is still better 
because I know he is. But I'm saying if they beat no, no, the no, undefeated they Eagles. Oh yeah. Yeah, no, they will. They will blow this man up to this. I'm like, watch those games. He did not play well. Shoot, even if you watch the Giants game, they won. He had like one good drive. First the Bucks, he has like one good drive. Like all their wins, he's had like one or two. He, good drives. he just plays good, clean football. Long term, I just don't see it working out um i mean or i don't see him let's just say he starts on playoffs it takes him from a, being this much of a threat with Dak to this still losing it still losing your first game either way because you're the cowboys yeah. so oh yeah naturally <laughs> we them boys yo um also right now if i if your name is if you are the cowboys coach i'm blanking on his name right now I'm McCarthy. Yeah. mccarthy you might want to hug dan quinn for that um, dominant defense, because that's been keeping you in this job. If they haven't been the best defense, they've definitely been top three. Using that two-headed monster of uh, Pollard and uh, Zeke pretty well. Yeah. So they, they got talent. It's just I just don't think so. they're good enough to win the Super Bowl. Oh, right. um, we'll go to Max's team. Um, <laughs> Eagles still undefeated. I think they're the only undefeated team. They are the only undefeated team. That's true um, last week, too. Over the Cardinals. They're going to be undefeated at the next week, too. It's going to keep going. Just to grind your gears, Max. Worst 5 0 team of all time. Okay, sure. Whatever. 5 0. 5 0, baby. Max, that Steelers team was undefeated. That Steelers team a couple years ago was undefeated. I don't. I think they're better than that. That Steelers team was 11 0, too, I think. Yeah, I got to tell them no. So they're not going to be the worst team because that team was. Not good. We all knew that team was over right now. I mean, Jalen Hurts with the ball hog really should get the balls where he's running back in the goal lines to score a rushing touchdown. I mean, selfish, really, at this point. Quit thinking about your fantasy team. And then, you know, why isn't A.J. Brown getting the ball more? I mean, these are just basic things that Hurts needs to work on, you know? Hurts is still now. He's going to be a, he's a distant third right now, but I do think he's third in MVP voting behind uh, Allen and Mahomes. I think those are two clear front runners, and then you get Hurts. But the Eagles, man, looking good. Defense is smothering teams. Offense, this wasn't their best week, but uh, they did enough. Can't stop Jalen Hurts on the goal line. He's getting that tud. Well, he's no Cam Newton at the goal line. He's better. Mm. You're <laughs> <big up. laughs> oh, dear boy. You know, the Eagles look good, you know. Kyler Murray has been a little disappointing this year. Well, you know, he got his money, so he'll have to worry about that. Kyle's kind of awesome. The new, yeah, the new Call of Duty is coming out soon, so you know he's gonna be pretty busy. So I might need to be- then bench Hollywood Brown, who's been doing work for me. Through five years. games, he's averaging five point eight yards per pass. Mm, beautiful. Uh, now, of course, DeAndre Hopkins comes back in two weeks, so I'm sure his numbers look a lot better then. But still, this is not what the Cardinals paid for. I mean, Cliff Kingsbury might be the next coach fired. They don't make playoff. He he should be fired. He's he's done at the end of the year. All right, let's go to the Bengals uh, losing to the Ravens. Well, the Ravens didn't choke a lead this time. The Bengals offense, I mean, it's it's lacking the fire. It's lacking the juice they had last year because teams are playing them differently, and Zach Taylor just hasn't figured out how to work Jamar Chase in a different way. I don't understand how they're having a hard time scoring this year. They'll still probably pull it together. But yeah, they have they just haven't looked as good as I thought they would. Yeah. And the Ravens, you know, Lamar Jackson, you know, he's he struggled with throwing the ball in the past couple of games. With he 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 touchdowns. missed a couple uh, wide open touchdowns, but then at the end he still made the he had that huge run on that last drive with his I think it was like a nineteen or so yard run, put him in field goal range, and Tucker, I mean, he's automatic, sixty one straight. I think is what they said from fourth yeah, quarter and cool. overtime. If there's a kicker in the NFL right now that I have I have full trust in, it's Justin Tucker. He could be a seventy yarder for the win. I'll feel confident. It must be so comforting as a Ravens fan knowing game on the line, field goal uh, to win it. You got Tucker. Any other team in the league, they like ah, I don't know. This could no. go either way. Yeah. I mean, sixty one, sixty one in a row in a fourth quarter overtime. That's insane. I mean, man for his career has only missed 32 field goals. That's good. All right. I'm going to the last game. It was a divisional game. Um, Chiefs over Raiders with a record-breaking performance by um, Kelsey. <laughs> what an interesting record that is. Way to maximize your catches. 
I equate uh, Travis Kelsey's stat line to that Jerome Bettis line from a few years, well, from way back when he had like nine carries. Yeah. But Travis Kelsey has seven catches, 25 yards, and four touchdowns. I will say the Raiders were more competitive in this game than I thought they would be. I thought the Chiefs would kind of blow them out. But the Raiders do what they do best. They find a way to lose the game. Seriously, you, they missed Chiefs missed the field goal. You had them um, four and out. You'd be driving for the win. Just need to get a field goal to win the <laughs> game. And you line up above the center. Like, it's just like the whole time you're like. You know, that, the, field goal, the, the field goal one wasn't above the center. Uh, I was mistaken. That was for defensive holding, which was an egregious call. And it shouldn't have been made. But to be fair, that was uh, negated by the egregious roughing the passer call on Chris Jones uh, on Carr. So at the end, both t- fans are going to be upset with those calls. But I think at the end, they, they negated each other. Horrendous. Why it was horrendous. horrendous. Because yeah. Chris because jo- they said Chris Jones was hitting Derek Carr and he also got the ball from him and as he's hitting him. So Chris Jones has the ball from Derek Carr and then he falls on top of him. So I guess they're saying the body weight thing, but there's literally nothing. Oh, but nothing Chris, they, Jones could have done. Um, Chris Jones did what they tell him to do and he put his hand down um, to alleviate some of the weight. Yeah, I know. It, it was a ter- it's a terrible call. I did see that the NFL is thinking about uh, looking into these rough in the passing calls in, in the off season. Oh, we have to wait till the off season for them to do anything. Okay, cool. But uh, aside from the refing issue um, for the Raiders, I mean, they tried to win this game with a two point conversion as well. This one was a tough loss for them. You could see how angry they were. I mean, you got Devontae Adams pushing cam- uh, camera people, whatever. <laughs> they were upset about losing this game. I mean, look, how are you going to have two of your top receivers running into each other? That's just a Raiders thing to do. Ow, ow, ow. What a terrible way to lose that game. It was hilarious to watch. my wow, how do y'all do that? They, they found a way. I feel like they're, just, they're just cursed to find ways to lose games. Yep, and the Chiefs are, are blessed to keep winning these games. Patrick Mahomes is playing, he, I, I would say, up there with Josh Allen. It may even be equal to him. But that game next week, I'm telling you, that that's, one had my eyes glued crucial. on that one. That's going to be crucial to the MVP voting right there. Oh, yeah. Very big. Going to have also on playoffs because that's, that's their only meeting, and that could be the difference of a one seed, one or two seed. Yeah, pretty much. Like, I feel like this game is just—it's just a preview of the AFC Championship, or should be. All right. Once again, I'm Legacy, and I'm Max. I'm Bobby. Not Jay. All right, and see you next time. Thank you to all the listeners. Thank you to all the subscribers out there, the commenters, uh, Malachi, Abigail Ridley, Horse Potter. And Corey, Catherine Lloyd, thanks for all the subscribers. Thanks for commenting, Michael Jeffrey, Phil Connors. Always a pleasure. Please like, share, subscribe, and see you all next time. The discussions begin. Mm-hmm.